Hi there boys and girls, welcome to lesson 6.2, subtraction with unlike denominators. Our essential question for tonight is, how can you use models to subtract fractions that have unlike denominators? Let's get started. Now let's take a look at question number 2. Number 2 says 3 fourths minus 3 eighths. If we were to do this with models, you can put down 3 fourths and then lay 3 eighths directly below it. And then you're going to see that you have this empty spot right here. So what you have to do is you have to find a common denominator for 4 and 8. That way you can subtract. Because remember, you can only add and subtract fractions with like denominators. So if you think about 4 and 8, the first common denominator that shows up would have to be 8. So that's why I have the purple example right here to show you that they're eighths. So I went ahead and plugged in three eighths in this little spot and it fit. So three fourths minus three eighths would equal three eighths. Now in a couple lessons from now, we will be actually adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators, but they will not be having models. So this is why it would be 3 eighths. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a sneak preview so that way when we get to that lesson, it'll be like you already have done this already. So what we did, what we did here is we found a common denominator of eight, and then we made equivalent fractions. 3 fourths is equal to 6 eighths, and 3 eighths is equal to 3 eighths. So that's why if if you would have looked at this 3 fourths right here and you were to turn it into only eighths, you would be able to fit 6 eighths up here. You'd have 2 eighths, 4 eighths, 6 eighths. So that's why this is equal to 6 eighths. You'd subtract 3 eighths and this is what would be left over, the other 3 eighths. So let's skip on over to question number 4 for our homework. And we're going to look at question number 4 that says 1 half minus 1 fifth. Now I went ahead and laid down my one hole because that just shows you um, that our fraction pieces are going to be less than one hole. But we're really focusing on this portion down here. So here's my one half, I laid down a one half fraction and directly below it I put the one fifth fraction because we want to find the difference. Now this portion right here will be the difference. Now as you see we have a two and a five for our denominators. Well, remember, with subtraction, you have to have like denominators. So we're going to go ahead and list our multiples of 2 and 5. And the first one that shows up for 2 and 5 would have to be 10. Because for 5, we have 5, 10. For 2, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that's why I took the tenths pieces right here. So it's like if I converted this all into tenths. So let's see if one half is equal to how many tenths? We all learned this back in fourth grade. One half is equal to five tenths. So it's like I could have fit five of these one tenth pieces right up here. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. And now we're gonna subtract one fifth. Well, how many tenths is one fifth? One fifth is equal to two tenths. And that's why in this portion right here, you could have fit two tenths. Divide it right down the middle and you'd have one tenth, two tenths. So imagine that this is five tenths and this is two tenths. Well, what's left over? Five tenths minus two tenths is three tenths. And that's why the difference would be three tenths. All right, let's jump over to number six. Number six says four fifths minus one half. So I went ahead and laid down four fifths, and then right below it I put one half. So we can see that this is the difference that we have to find. Again, five and two we found on the last slide we did together had the denominator of 10 that would be common because our multiples of two are two, four, six, eight, and 10 and our multiples of five are five and 10. So the least common denominator that they share is 10. So imagine if I had these little tenth pieces all inside up here. Well, let's see how many tenths four fifths would equal to. Four fifths would equal eight tenths. 
So imagine if I put 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths. Now 1 half we discovered equals 5 tenths. So this has the same value as 5 tenths. So we have 8 tenths minus 5 tenths gives you this little leftover portion right here that is 3 tenths. So we can say that 4 fifths minus 1 half is equal to 3 tenths. It's already in simplest form. All right, let's take a look at number 8. It says 5 eighths minus 1 half. For this one, I went ahead and laid down 5 eighths, and directly below it, I laid down 1 half. And then I had to find the common denominator for 2 and 8 because they're not the same. So when I knew when I counted by 2s, I would get 8. Well, it's already done for me on this denominator, so I went ahead and made them both eighths. So we have five eighths minus four eighths. Remember, one half is equal to four eighths. Do you see how directly below it is one half? And it matches up with four eighths because we learned finding equivalent fractions back in fourth grade that one half is equal to four eighths. And this picture proves why right there. So the difference is this little portion right here which would fit right inside there, like a puzzle, it'd be 1 8. So we can say 5 8 minus 4 8, also known as 1 half, is equal to 1 8. All right, let's go ahead and walk through number 12 together. Number 12 says 2 thirds minus 1 half. I went ahead and set up 2 thirds, and directly below it I put down 1 half, and we're going to find this leftover portion. Now, as you can see, 3 and 2 are not the same denominators. So if I lifted my multiples of 3, I would have 3, 6, 9. I'm going to stop right there. Let's list our multiples of 2. 2, 4, 6. The least common multiple that they share is 6. So therefore, let's go ahead and convert it all into 6. So if I had 2 thirds, that would equal... 4, 6, because 3 times 2 is 6 and 2 times 2 is 4. Let's look up here. Imagine I could put 4 of these 6 pieces right up here. 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6. Now if we subtract 1 half, remember 1 half is equal to 3, 6. So imagine I could fit 3 of these 6 pieces here. 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6. So the leftover portion would have to be 1, 6 because the equation is 4, 6 minus 3, 6 equals 1, 6. And we know it's already simplified because the numerator is 1. All right, let's go down to our problem-solving questions. Number 13 says, Amber had 3 eighths of a cake left after her party. Here's our 3 eighths I laid down right here. She wrapped a piece that was one-fourth of the original cake for her best friend. So she wrapped one-fourth of the three-eighths. What fraction did she have left for herself? I'm going to go ahead and circle have left. So that way it reminds me I'm going to see what's left over. And that means that we're subtracting because we took away one-fourth of her three-eighths. Now we know eight and four are different denominators. But if I listed my denominators for four and for eight... The least common multiple is 8. So therefore, we can say, let's do it all in eighths. So we have 3 eighths, which is already done for us, minus 1 fourth. Now remember, 1 fourth is equal to 2 eighths. So look right here. Do you see how directly below the 2 eighths is equal to 1 fourth? Because they're equivalent fractions. So whatever is the difference is this portion right here. So 2 eighths is right here, plus 1 eighth equals 3 eighths, or we could say 3 eighths minus 2 eighths is 1 eighth. So she had 1 eighth of the cake left over all for herself. All right, so let's take a look at number 14. It says Wesley bought one half pound of nails for a project. When he finished the project, he had one fourth pound of the nails left. How many pounds of nails did he use? Okay, those are clue words that we're subtracting because he's taking it away from his original one half of a pound. So, I have the model right down here for you. We have one half 
and then we did minus one fourth. So we want to see what this value is right here. Now as you can see, my denominators are different. I have a two and a four. So when you think about your multiples of two, you have two, four, six. Your denominator for four would be four. Well, you can stop right there. The least common one that they share is four. And that's why I have this green piece chosen right down here. So now we have one half minus one fourth is equal to the value of one fourth. One fourth can fit right in there. And let's talk about why. One half we know is equal to how many fourths? It's equal to two fourths. Can you see why? If I were to drag this up into here, they would match up with one half. So one half has a value of two fourths. But if I take away one half, one fourth from my two fourths, what do we have left? Two fourths minus one fourth equals one fourth. And that's why we know that would be the difference in this portion right here. So you're needing to do the top two questions for our homework on the back side of that page. I went ahead and created the model picture for you because it's not provided in your GoMath book. So go ahead and work on numbers one and two. Use my models for a guide. And then do questions three through six for your review problems of fifth grade work. And I also want you to assess yourself at the top of your page. I want you to put either novice, apprentice, practitioner, or expert. You could put a one, two, three, or four based on using models for subtraction. And we will practice more of this tomorrow in class. So if you feel like you're around this level, don't worry. You will probably get up to this level or this level by the end of the class period as you practice with your own fraction bars. All right, so please work out your questions very carefully. Here are your models. You may want to pause the video so you can look at them to help you solve this problem. All right, have a great night.